Welcome everyone today to our webcast, What's New in Autodesk Revit Fundamentals for Residential Design Learning Guide. I will now pass the floor over to Sharice. Yeah, all right. Well, um, I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to join us for a look at our new Revit Fundamentals for Residential Design Learning Guide. Of course, as you know, my name is Sharice Bidoff, and I'm a learning content developer with Ascent, developing and maintaining the Revit Advanced Still. And um, I also co author BIM 360 or the many faces of BIM 360. And um, a little bit about me before this, I was a CAD management consultant supporting both small and large firms get their software set up and help them establish a workflow um, to become more successful with um, the Autodesk software. And the software that I cover and that I know and have been using for over 18 years is AutoCAD Architecture, MEP, Advanced Steel, Revit, Navisworks, and so let's um, let's take a look at what we're going to be looking at today. So in this webcast, I'm going to be using both PowerPoint presentation and pre-recorded video. Um, I'm going to talk about why we created a residential book, and then briefly cover what is within the book. And I'm going to talk about some of the residential specific content. And then I'm gonna demo adding base trim or baseboards to the model. And then how to create a sloped roof over a garage door and how to add fascia soffit freeze board as well as creating a bird box at the gable eave transition. And then at the end of the webcast, will be um, opening up for Q&A, <laughs> like Kareen said. Okay, so the purpose for the residential specific learning guide was to address the learning needs of the architects and the architectural drafter designers and the additional details in which they need to include their, include in their model. Um, the objective for the Revit 2021 Fundamentals um, Guide is to teach you how to create a full 3D architectural model, including you know, walls, doors, windows, all the necessary components, floors and ceilings, and using the basic tools that architectural users need. So this book covers three key phases of design in just designing in Revit, okay? So the first section is the introduction to BIM and Revit and how the two work hand in hand, as well as covering terminology, how to navigate around the model in 2D and 3D. And then the design development phase focuses on teaching you how to use the tools to create a 3D residential model. And then the third section of this uh, guide is the construction document phase, which teaches you the tools to create accurate construction documents uh, for your model. And then some unique features um, pertaining to residential is in chapter four, which is modeling walls. This chapter includes instructions on how to create, modify exterior and interior walls, but also covers adding finished carpentry, like baseboards, using wall sweeps. So let's flip over to my demo on adding a base trim uh, to the residential models dining area. So what I'm gonna do is open up a 3D view I'm just gonna hide these uh, levels so I don't see them. I'm gonna rotate the view about the first floor plan view. So what it's doing here is just giving me a section box around just the first floor. And I'm going to change the color shade here so I can actually 
see, and, and you guys can see as well. And I'm gonna start the wall sweep command. And of course, making sure I have my type and that it's gonna be horizontal on the wall. And as I hover, you can see a preview of where that base is, or excuse me, where that trim's gonna go. So if I place it and hit escape, you can see I placed it now on the wall. And when I select on it, you'll notice over to the left here in properties, it's three inches above first floor. So I'm just set that to zero. And then I'm gonna continue adding by add remove walls and just pick the walls. Now notice um, here, if I select on the wall again that I just placed the trim, it goes away. But I simply can just select the wall again and it puts it back on that wall. And now using shift in the middle mouse button, I'm gonna rotate. So I hope you all have um, your drama mean this morning <laughs> and place it on the other walls here. And then I, I wanna rotate back to that original view that we were initially in and zoom in here to the corner. And you'll notice that they did not clean up. And the way that uh, Revit allows you to clean this up is you grab these grips and drag it to the corner and then it miters up real nice. Real pretty light. And then of course, I'm gonna just flip to the top view and you'll notice that the sweep is going all the way along this wall because it's just one continuous wall. So I need to drag it back, zoom back in here and just drag it to snap to that corner so that it cleans up. And then of course, with um, this trim, I need to make sure that all the corners are cleaned up. So I'm gonna come to this corner and drag it back. And then I'm just pan, I'm gonna pan and look at the other corners to make sure they're cleaned up. And notice I didn't add one on this wall. So I'm just gonna add remove walls and select it. And because I had the settings already in properties and I basically started the command again, this the same zero feet from first floor shows up. So one thing I wanna mention that if I were to add a wall opening or a door, this wall sweep will cut back to the opening. So moving on, I wanna talk about um, some other unique features in, like in chapter eight is modeling ceilings. So it's covering, um, modifying and creating, of course, the ceilings, but you will also learn how to create a socket wall. So this is below the um, balcony in the great room. And then a chamfered ceiling in the master bedroom. Another um, feature of this book is chapter nine, which covers creating and modifying roofs, creating dormers, and adding fascia, soffits, gutters, and also using the fascia tool to create boxed eaves or bird boxes. And this is where I'm gonna demo um, adding fascia and soffit. So I'm gonna uh, flip over to my demo here, and we're gonna add a sloped garage, or a sloped, <laughs> sloped roof over the garage. And then we're gonna add some fascia, some freeze board and that bird box and soffit, can't forget soffit. All right, so here I am in the 3D model and I'm going to place the fascia board all around the edge of the second floor roof and then the first floor. So starting the roof fascia command, making sure my type set and a vertical offset that I need. I'm just gonna kind of zoom in here and select the edge of the roof. And one thing about working in Revit and adding this is you're gonna get really good at orbiting around, which is the uh, shift key and the mouse wheel. 
So holding that mouse wheel down and then moving the mouse around. And as I rotate, I don't know if you can see the blue lines. Um, some of them, clean. you can tell that some of them are cleaning up and some are kind of extending into the roof. So what you need to do is when, when you're done is zoom in to these corners and where it's not connecting, select on that fascia board and use the grips to dry it back so that it cleans up. And you'll do this on, you know, you wanna check all your corners, of course, and clean up just by moving those grips. All right, so now to the first floor roof here. I'm gonna start the roof fascia command, set the vertical offset, and now notice that what I can do here to kind of speed this up is if I, use, if I hit the tab key, you can see the whole porch roof highlight. And then once I click on it, it adds that fascia board along the, the edge of the porch. I try it on this edge, it's not going to recognize that gable end, so I'm just gonna place it but it will let me tab on the gable end. And then again, this back porch here, tab to place the entire run here. And now my final gable here, which is the garage, and then the other side of the garage. So again, the whole cleanup, I got to, Go to all my corners, see if they're cleaning up. If not, select on it and drag it back, and then it automatically will clean up for you. All right, so the next task here, we're going to create the sloped roof over the garage. And I am actually going to need to open up my first floor, uh, first floor view. And I'm gonna tile the two views so I can just see as I'm drawing the roof, I can see it being created in the 3D view. And so from the first floor view, I'm going to start the roof by footprint. I'm gonna make sure it defines slope, it has an overhang and extends to wall core. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna be drawn at second floor with a base offset and set any other properties I need to in here. And then I'm gonna select or pick the, ex, the three exterior garage walls and then use the pick tool to select the face of the garage and then trim it up. And this is the shape of that sloped roof. Now I don't need all four. Well, I, I mean, I, I need at least three to define the slope. So I'm gonna use that back one as having no slope and set the slope to be the same as the rest of the model. And once I hit finish, you'll notice over in 3D that my roof has now been created. And I'm gonna join the gable roof and that sloped roof so it cuts it back nicely and cleans up. And of course, gotta add fascia set my vertical profile offset and just select that edge. And then of course, got to join it. So selecting the fascia trim and the new one. And there we go. So the next uh, step here, we're going to add soffit to the overhang of this garage. And I'm going to keep it in, you know, I'm going to keep my floor plan view and the 3D view. But what I have to do in floor plan is I have to set the underlay. So I need to look up to second floor so I can see kind of the roof outline. Then I know where I'm drawing my soffit. So I'm going to start the roof soffit command, make sure my type set, and of course the level, second floor. And then I'm going to, I'm going to use a uh, rectangle here and I'm just going to, from the pitch to the exterior side of the garage and based off of 
measurements, I know that I need this edge of the soffit to be about five and uh, one thirty seconds from the exterior side. And now I obviously have to slope. I don't want a straight soffit, so I've got to define the slope set the level of where that slope's going to begin and the base off, uh, from offset i don't want that soffit starting right at second level and then of course the slope so that it's the same as the rest and once i hit the finish button you'll notice over here in 3d i have my soffit and now in 3D, I can move that soffit into place and do whatever I need with that soffit now that it's in the right location. One thing I want to do is instead of drawing another piece on the other side of this gable overhang, I'm gonna use the mirror command and just mirror that about the gable pitch here. And then if I zoom back a little bit, you'll see that that soffit was created. And then over here in 3D, if I rotate to look dead on to the right side and zoom in, you'll see the two pieces of soffit. All right. And now I got to do it to the other side on the other gable end where the master bedroom or not master bedroom but the master bath is and zoom into the first floor on the other side and then once again start the roof soffit command set my uh level it's all about levels and offsets here and i'm just gonna do the same thing create it from the pitch line there and on the inside of that fascia board. Of course, I'm gonna set my slope, but I want, I'm not gonna set my level because I want you to see what happens if I miss something. So if I don't set the offset, if I don't set the level, how you can get around this. So after setting my slope and finish, you'll notice in 3D, that it is basing itself off of first floor. Now I, I can come in here, delete the soffit, recreate it, but what I'm gonna do is rotate to look dead on at that soffit and the, the gable end and use the move command to just move this up into place. And because you're now a pro at orbiting this model, you can rotate it to look at the underside and see if it's correct. And once again, I'm gonna mirror it so that it is on the other side as well. And in 3D view, you can see the soffits are now on both sides of the gable. So my next step here is I wanna run a soffit all the way around that first floor roof. And so I'm gonna get rid of the 3D view. I can rotate it to look at the underside, but I, I need all the room I can get because I'm gonna do a lot of zooming and panning. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm going to create it on just the side because I have that gable in, I don't want soffit running straight across the master bath wall there. So I'm gonna set the half inch plywood, second floor, and then of course, Going to set the height offset from level so it's not precisely on the second floor level and then here i'm going to use the pick line tool and i'm just going to pick the inside of the fascia exterior face of the wall and i'm going to flip back and forth through trim. And one thing about this book is it will show you and tell you the um, shortcuts for some of these tools. So I'm just going to flip back and forth from trim and pick line and pick the inside of the fascia here. This, this side is going to run right under that sloped garage. And 
coming down here, flipping over to my trim. So trim is just TR, but then going back up, selecting pick lines and panning around this model. Now I'm coming up to the final um, area. And again, I don't want this to come across. So I'm going to select that exterior wall and trim it up. And now I need to do the inside of the soffit. So the soffit has to close a formed loop. Reason why I am switching back and forth from trim to pick line. This time I'm gonna use the a kind of a combination between the pick line and the pick wall. And of course, flipping over to trim as needed. Now I'm not gonna get um, the complete underside of the porch. I'm just gonna come to the front end of the, the porch roof here. Now, one thing about that I wanna say about this uh, adding soffits is if I were to use the tab key like I was doing with the fascia board, it would try and grab like this little area of roof. It, it wouldn't know what I actually wanted. So going and picking line by line is about all you can do here. So now when I hit the finish button, you can see that I get an error. So even though I was flipping back and forth, trimming the model, there is still somewhere in my line work that is open and is not a closed loop. So I'll pan over and Revit highlights where it's at, and I can easily just trim and hit finish. If there were more, it would tell me. It would just keep going until I get it right. So in a 3D view here, if I just rotate around, you can see that it's all the way around. And then you can continue and add the soffit underneath the porch roof. But what I want to do is move over to adding the freeze board. So again, starting the roof fascia command, making sure my type is set correctly, which is this freeze one, one by 12. I'm going to select the edge of the soffit. Now you'll notice that when I placed it, it's just showing the outline. That means that I've got it on the wrong side of the wall. So I can use these flip arrows to flip it into place. And now I'm gonna select on the existing freeze board there and, row, and orbit around, much easier to orbit around an object. And then to add one to the other side, I'm gonna use the add remove segments, select that edge of the soffit, and there's my freeze board. Now I do need to clean up those ends. They're extending past the roof there. So I'm going to uh, select the modify moderate mo uh, and <laughs> miter it horizontally and select the freeze board using the grips. I want this to butt or rest on top of the sloped roof. Now, if you snap to somewhere you don't need, just simply grab the grips and drag it into place. And then you would, from here, continue to add it, the freeze boards to the rest of the gable ends. What I wanna show you now is adding the bird box. So I'm gonna zoom over here to the master bass um, eave transition here and kind of try and orbit this into place. And then I, I'm gonna start the roof fascia command. Now, on my backside, I'm gonna use this one by 12. I'm gonna set the vertical profile offset because I don't, I want it to hit this soffit about midpoint. So if I pick this top edge, comes in, right at the center there. And of course, I wanna select on this and drag back the end because I don't want it extending into the house. And then the opposite end, I wanna make sure it's on that corner. So be careful not to get the temporary dimensions and drag it forward, okay? Now, one thing I could do 
is click add, remove segments. But I'm going to restart the fascia command because I don't want those joined. They will, they will behave in the same manner. So here again, using the one by six, I'm going to set the offset so that it just comes up and aligns with the bottom there. I'm going to restart the fascia command because I want this top piece to follow suit with whatever I do to the bottom one. And here I've added it without the vertical offset, so I need to set that. And then I'm going to pick this outside and notice that I'm too far forward, right? So what I'm going to do, of course, I want to drag this in so it's within the fascia board of the roof and then pan back to find my arrows and just flip it into place. Now, because I drew these two one by sixes together, once I drag one piece, the other, other one's gonna follow. So now I'm gonna join all of these fascia boards together and with the existing roof fascia as well and then join the one by 12 with the one by sixes. And there's the bird box. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select on this corner board and I'm gonna extend it so it's on the uh, butting up against the soffit there. And then in order to create another bird box, you can't mirror it, you can't copy it. So you gotta rotate over to the other side and you would then start the roof fascia command and do the exact same thing on this side. And, and then you would go up to the gables and do the exact same thing. All right. So moving on to um, some more unique features of the residential design book. Chapter 11 uh, is adding components, but here you add kitchen components and create a kitchen layout. You also bring in the fireplace and mantle and some of the other like um, water heater and some other equipment. In chapter 12, this teaches you the fundamentals of the design options. This is creating different options within the model and creating views to show the different designs to present to your client. And that concludes the uh, webcast for the new Revit Fundamentals for Residential Design Guide. So just to recap, we discussed um, the, uh, why we created residential, a residential guide. We talked about the unique features related to the residential design book and what is in the book. And then I demonstrated how to add the base trim as well as the sloped roof, the fascia, soffit, and bird box.